Today at the Vince Electric Lining Laboratory, we're going to see one last component used in HPS systems, the igniter. We're also going to take a look at electric ballasts from the simple reactor to the magnetic regulator type. Let's get started for this last part of the lining maintenance series. You're watching the sixth and last part of our Lightning Mountain series in production since early 2010. Not full time though, I've got to admit. Today we're going to talk about a couple of things, which are first, igniters used with HPS and pulse start metal light lamps then electric ballasts and all of them and what we're going to do after the lining maintenance series all right let's get started you may have noticed that high pressure sodium lining systems use an extra part that extra part is called an igniter an igniter is a device that generates precise high voltage inductive kicks to start a sodium lamp it's kind of like a fluorescent starter but way faster the igniter is designed to generate voltage spikes precisely at the peaks of the EC sine wave, so the igniter can be the most efficient. As with the fluorescent starter, when the lamp ignites, it shorts the igniter and disables it automatically. And if the lamp shuts off with the battle still being on, the igniter will constantly try to reignite the lamp. This may cause a premature failure of the igniter if a spent lamp is left in the fixture for too long. For further information, you can go on Advanced website and look for the troubleshooting documentation. With that being said, let's move on to electric ballasts. We're going to explain quickly what are the, the different ballast types and their characteristics. They can first be put in two main categories, reactor type and constant wattage. The first category groups two major ballast circuitries. The first one is the most simple and efficient of all of them. It consists of a simple coil. That's it. The reactor is one coil, period. Its inductance, plus a little resistance, creates an inductive reactance, which limits the current to a certain value. They generate a substantial voltage drop as well, making them usable only with lamps working at voltages significantly lower than line voltage. In Europe, this poses no problem. But in 120 volt countries, like US and Canada, the voltage is too low. In order to solve this problem, it is possible to combine this reactor with an auto transformer to rise the voltage before bringing it back to the necessary value. This very thing is called an HX ballast, or high reactance auto transformer. High reactance because of the reactor, and auto transformer because, well, there's one. Aside from that winding, both are strictly identical. They both react the same to line voltage variations. Both of them can run rectifying lens with no problem. They're both very reliable as well. Alright, now what are constant wattage ballasts? Those were first created in the 1950s for mercury vapor lamps. The first type created is the constant wattage isolated. It was often sold simply as constant wattage. It's basically a regular transformer assembled with a loose magnetic coupling of primary and secondary, with a capacitor to add some reactants to the circuit and correct the power factor. This ballast type is still mandatory in the Canadian electrical code for face-to-face -face ballasts, since the lamp is completely isolated from the primary. The second sort of constant wattage ballast, and the most common of them all as well, is the CWA, or constant wattage auto transformer. This one shares characteristics with the HX, but in addition there is a capacitor that contributes to the lamp's irregulation, and corrects the power factor too. As with HPF fluorescent ballasts, a CWA simply won't run a rectifying lamp, because the capacitor naturally acts as a DC filter. Since a rectifying lamp basically becomes a diode, it creates a DC component that's blocked by the cap. This cap can also short, which burns the primary in a very short time, or open, which prevents the lamp from operating. The third and last sort is the magnetic regulator, or regulator lag. 
It uses three coils, one being used exclusively by the capacitor. This ballast provides an excellent degree of regulation, because the lamp's current and voltage are regulated by the magnetic circuit. However, this regulation efficiency is done at the cost of higher losses. The lining maintenance series is now officially completed. You may be wondering, what's up next? Well, the next series we'll be working on is about the end of the incandescent light bulb. There's gonna be at least two parts, one on the legal context of the band, and a second part on the alternatives to the incandescent lamp.